G'day viewers, Rob from Hook and Mouth Tackle. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be my top 10 early snapper season tips. Stay tuned. As most anglers would know, Victorian snapper season starts in early September and goes right through to March. So colloquially speaking, the early season is between September and October. In August and early September, schools of snapper congregate in the Port Phillip Bay heads and Western Port to make their dash into Port Phillip Bay to spawn. The fish come in fully loaded with milk and roe and their main objective or their desire is to spawn to ensure the survival of their species. Prior to actually spawning, they tend to feed up. So this is a great time to target snapper. Now let's get straight into the top 10 tips in no certain order. Tip one, fish unweighted. So there's three things that play fundamental roles within the time frame that the snapper are in the bay. The first one is water temperature. The second would be the availability of food. And number three would be their desire to spawn. Let's just focus on water temperature for time being. Snapper are particularly sensitive to changes in water temperature. So having an understanding of how the bay temperatures work can help you catch more fish. For example, on a hot day, the sun's rays can penetrate into the upper part of the water and the middle part of the water column. So this means that the upper and the middle layers of the water column will be a lot warmer than say the lower layers. So it only makes sense to ensure that you put your bait where the fish are. And in this case, if the warmer water is in the, the lower, sorry, the, the upper and the lower column, then more likely the fish will be gonna be feeding in those areas. So if fishing unweighted means that your your bait doesn't automatically go to the bottom, it'll sink down naturally and slowly in that water column and you'll have more chances of actually hooking a fish. Additionally, fishing unweighted has another advantage which is that it offers the fish less resistance when it grabs the baits. Snapper in the early season can be a little cautious until they settle down, so fishing unweighted is a great way to go. Tip two, fish at night, dusk or dawn. As some anglers know, some species are better off targeted during the day and some are better off targeted at night. Snapper happen to be a species that are better off targeted in low light conditions. It's a fact that species that bite well in dusk and dawn will also bite, bite very well at night. We know the snapper can be a shy fish, so targeting snapper during clear water conditions and super light conditions during the day can be a real challenge to the angler. So look for overcast conditions if you are going to fish during the day, fish dusk, dawn, and at night time for snapper in the early season. Night time is a great time to target snapper as the fish have a lot more confidence to attack your bait. Tip number three, adjust your drag settings. If possible, fish with no drag. Understanding the way snapper feed or take your bait will go a long way to you understanding how to set up your drag system. If you, want to, if you want to know more about how snapper feed, be sure to check out our um, website, which has a blog article, uh, actually a number of blog articles on the feeding habits of snapper, which will really help you get a lot, of, lot more knowledge on how snapper actually grab a bait, take a bait, all that sort of stuff. So definitely one of the most frustrating bites of snapper is the short, sharp runs, which results in the fish taking the bait and spinning it out. Now the way to overcome this is backing your drag right off. Now if you have a free spool reel, like a bait runner, Shimano bait runner like this, you'll be well positioned to catch fish in the early season. Now these reels are pretty amazing as they allow you to utilize two drag settings. So you have your main drag setting, which is set obviously at the top here, like normal, and it has a, as a, drag setting over here on the back so you can just click that over and that allows you to adjust the drag here so essentially you can set this rod rod up this reel up so that you can have this just running basically at a free spool and then basically once you're ready to hook the fish the fish will take take a run and it'll you'll see a line going out and you'll hear it making some zzz noises everyone loves that noise once you hear that you're ready to strike the fish Basically, by once you reel this like about twice, it it kicks in your normal drag system, and you can hook the fish. This is a great way of catching fish. Uh, snapper um, in the early season is I highly recommend using a free spool reel. And if you don't have a bait runner equivalent, don't worry, it's not the end of the world. What you can do is you just open your bail arm and let let it run free, and when you're ready to 
to uh, hook the fish, just click your bail arm over and you can hook the fish. So you don't actually need a bait runner, but they are really handy to have, especially if you're fishing multiple rods. Tip number four, collect fresh bait. So do yourself a favor and get out and catch as much fresh bait as you can. Squid, flathead, yakas, pilchards, etc. Ultimately, the best bait of the season will be whatever is in, in abundance in your local area. So if you've got a school of garfish, which we currently got uh, that have gone through the winter in Port Phillip Bay, uh, there's been lots of reports on the eastern side. There's been lots of there's lots of reports of um, garfish in in and around Geelong. We've been catching them in Williamstown. So now knowing that there's been a lot of garfish through the bay, so this season I've targeted garfish and I put them in the freezer ready to go because that's going to be my bait of choice. Uh, this season because we, we we know that there's an abundance of uh, garfish in the bay So whatever's in abundance is always squid in the bay. We all know that so squid's always such a reliable bait But if you can get them live um, Keep them live. If you've got a tank I've got I'm lucky enough to have a fish tank over here, which I try and keep the live bait in squid heads That's always always a dynamite bait as well So keep your eye open for fresh bait in the water. So use the time in you know August September uh, October to suck collecting and gathering bait for yourself. Don't ever look past fresh flathead fillets as well. They do a really good job on, on uh, catching snapper. Fillet it and big strips, that's a perfect bait. So don't, don't forget the old humble flathead. Now, when you are bait fishing to stock up, if you could take this route, it's a great opportunity to actually scout out locations where you think snapper will come in uh, during the thicker season as well. So look for drop-offs, look for um, rubbly bottom where they might be all that type of thing so and mark those if you've got it lucky enough to have a sounder mark those on your sounder on your GPS and come back to those grounds uh, in the in the season tip number five use the right rigs as we know it can be a little bit more challenging trying to catch a snapper in the early season so you need all the advantages you can get and one of the great advantages is definitely uh, some flasher rigs now flasher rigs come in standard tinsel-like material and uh, super UV material. Some of the samples here uh, of the UV material come in all different colors, obviously. Uh, you can see that they actually have properties that will glow at night or in the dark. You charge it up with a torch and away you go. So this will, you know, you get your bait to the bottom or wherever it is, mid column, and this will have glowing properties which will attract the fish and you'll have more opportunities to catch a, a big red. A good to have in your arsenal. Just stick with your standard snail rigs as well. If you want to know how to rig up a flasher rig correctly with the, with your baits, I'll leave a link below to a, a video I did many years ago on how to set up your flasher rigs. Tip number six, locate fish using a sounder. Now snapper feed on the move, so that makes them a foraging fish, which means they're constantly on the move, which means that you've got to constantly look for them. You know, you'll mark them up. You might have a session where you bang, you're just snap, catching snapper after snapper, but you go there the next day, nothing. So because snapper move in schools around looking for food, so you've got to be able to learn to move and look for snapper. So having a sounder is, is pretty important when you're out on the water on a kayak or a uh, or a boat. So remembering snapper feed, crushing up crustaceans like crabs and all sorts of shellfish down on the bottom, and they hunt octopus on the bottom, and they might hunt squid mid column or bait fish mid column or top of the table so just keep in mind that that snapper aren't always on the bottom like most people think they could be in the mid to the middle to the top as well so keep that in mind as well that they're a foraging fish and that they are constantly moving from top to bottom so a sounder will help you understand where they are and where you need to get your line down to now that we know snapper will feed mid mid column top column bottom column you need to get on the move to try and locate them. So that means, firstly, you might go on the drift. If you've got a kayak and you can't, you're limited to a spot, the best thing probably to do is just, just drift, go on the drift until you actually come across a fish. And then basically, this is great, especially if you don't have a sounder, then just drop, drop anchor once you find the fish, right? Otherwise, you wanna take the time to paddle around, or in this case, motor around on your boat until you actually find them. It's so much worth putting the time and effort in is to actually finding fish on your sounder before you drop anchor. I know you can always put your burley in and try and attract the fish, 
but this time of year it's a bit harder you really want to try and locate the fish with the sounder if possible and you know if you're land based you really just got to rely on burley you've got to go to a spot you know where they people have caught them before or you've caught them yourself and you've got a burly hard tip number seven fish the top of the bay as discussed in my previous video and my previous blog fish the top of the bay the water temperature the water waters are up around coming out of the river mouths so you what you want to do is you want to get up into those areas and you want to target the fish in those areas because they're hanging around where that warmer water is well you find it a little bit warmer in and around those river mouths especially like up through the yarra uh, where the yarra comes out and then in you'll see a lot of people catching out at newport right at the moment uh, through williamstown all through there because the water the warmer water the snapper have come in and they were already moved up to the top part of the bay so fish that top part of the bay tip eight experimentation take your time in the, the early season to experiment see what's working cast out plastics run different rigs run different baits find out what's working for you in your local area experiment with your rigs you set up all of it so at this time of year for me fishing off a kayak i usually run three rods i'll have a soft plastic and sometimes i'll just have that as a sleeper or i'll work it i'll have one rod with a twin snell third rod i'll have a pat noster with a flasher rig or i'll just have a flasher rig tied to a running sinker tip nine lower your expectations right be patient stick to the course and expect there to be sessions where you don't catch any quality size fish for example i've been four times uh throughout late august and september and I have only caught a couple of small, maybe 35 centimetre fish, that's it. But that, I'm okay with that because I understand that I'm not going to catch a big fish every time I go out. The fish could be already there, and they probably more than likely are, but they just haven't settled into their summer feeding pattern just yet. So be patient. Yep, just mix it up until you get it right, and eventually it'll come. Remember, the more time you're on the water, the more likely you are to actually encounter a good sized fish. So. Just keep on going. I mean, don't get disheartened. I know it's hard sometimes. You see your social feed just piling up. It starts to have effect psychologically when you're out in the water and you're not catching anything. Just be patient. Your time will come. Just keep on going and just keep on persisting and changing it up and you'll catch a good fish. All right, last tip, tip 10, migration patterns. All right, learn your local migration patterns. You know, snapper are a habitual creature. So it's gonna pay for you to learn their migration patterns. You know, and that can come from just talking to people who are fishing in the local area or anybody. There's many ways you can learn migration patterns through books. There's lots of quality books around that you can learn from. If you've got any mates that go out fishing, pick their brain. You know, watch YouTube videos. You know, you can start to pick up where people are catching them. They might not say where they're catching them, but you can certainly pick up landmarks where they're catching them. So, you know, do your, do your homework and learn your migration patterns. It's a key, key thing to where the fish are moving. One of those migration patterns is that we know the fish move to the top of the bay because they're looking for that warmer water um, temperature. Look for a congregation of boats in the area as well. I'm not saying to go and if you see people boat anchored up and go and park right next to them, don't do that at all. But what I'm saying is just keep your eye on what's going on around. So for example, you know, I fished the same spot, you know, basically roughly, you know, the same local area uh, regularly every year for the last probably 10, 15 years. And like last year, all the kayakers were down in what's called Fleming's Pool, and they were catching them in really shallow into the rocks. And then the next year, they were catching them closer to the pier. So if you're observant, you'll start to see that obviously people are sounding them up, and they've already done the hard work for you. So sometimes you can, I mean, I don't like, personally, I don't like to follow the pack, and I don't, I don't I'll sit off where the pack is. I don't usually go, get in amongst where everybody is, but um, it is another, that's another way to, figure out where the fish are biting. So for example, if I drive past and see, you know, 10 kayakers, 15 kayakers all in one spot, then you generally know that they talk together, they know what's going on, they're contacting. So what I normally do is then, I don't go out obviously what right when they are, but the following day I might go out or day after, or whatever it might be, and, and I've found some success that way. Like I said, don't just go anchor up next to somebody because people don't take kind to that. Uh, rightly so uh, find your own spot but just keep your eye open to where people might be fishing because it gives you a good indication where the fish might have been previously and they might be still hanging around well there you have it that's 10 tips I've given you to get out there and catch an early big red so get out there and, and put some of this knowledge uh, to action 
and let us know, let us know how you go. If you've picked up any good tips here, put it in the comments, like, share, and subscribe. But we'd love to hear if some of the information here helped you to get a big early reg. I'm Rob. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Cheers.